Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Emily. I'm with Telltale. Um, today we're going to be doing a review on Nightfall by Isaac Asimov. Asimov? I think that's how you say it. Um, so there is a book by Isaac Asimov that is a collection of his work um, called Nightfall as well. It is titled after the very, uh, the very short story we're going to be talking about, but we do want to make sure that we clarify we are actually reviewing the short story, not the entire collected works in its, you know, in its realm. So it is an interesting story. Um, Greg informed me that this one was uh, voted the best sci science fiction short story of all time or something to that effect. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fascinating idea. For those of you who are not familiar, the synopsis is there is a planet that has never experienced night because it has so many suns around it. But every 2000 years, there's a single sun in the sky and it gets eclipsed. And what ends up happening from what they can gather from ancient texts and things like that is there's an eclipse that eclipses out this particular sun every 2,000 years. And everybody says that, oh, there's, then you can, like ancient texts say that there are stars in the sky and everybody loses their minds because they've never seen stars before. And so there's like this cult that's based around the stars that you can see at night. And the scientists are like, mm, it's not likely that there's so many and stuff like that. The cultists, they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, it's it's just going to be night, you know, like it's just going to be dark and we're going to have to cope with it and figure it out. And we're going to document this for future generations. So they're at an observatory trying to document this. The cultists are trying to break into this observatory to try and... Uh, stop them from documenting it because they believe it's not really clear what they believe um they believe in the will of the stars and i don't know if it's the will of the stars is the need to regenerate their civilization every two thousand years or what but this religion decides that it's sacrilege for them to document this so they're trying to break in they're trying to recruit everybody and their brother that they can get to break in and these scientists are just trying to document this event for future generations because they suspect everybody's going to go crazy, potentially, and burn everything down and restart society because they've destroyed themselves from going nuts, having experienced these stars. Um, so the concept of it is really interesting. Uh, it deals with a lot of the themes of humanity trying to fathom their smallness in the universe. Um, because these, this civilization on this planet doesn't necessarily believe that there's anything else out there. Like there might be other, a couple other suns or maybe some, you know, if in other places, but they're only expecting like a dozen. They're not expecting millions. They're not expecting other galaxies. They um, have theories that it's possible that those things are out there, but because they've never witness them until this point in the story they're just really skeptical there's no other life out there there's no other planets out there there's just you know um I wish there had been more world building of course that's really hard to do and y'all know I'm a sucker for good world building but um because this is a short story you don't get a lot of information about how technologically advanced this uh civilization is you know they have cameras you know they have an observatory you know they have scientists but a lot of the scientists are really i mean they're really guessing it's i mean it's i guess that's no different than our scientists we all have theory that's how you develop a scientific theory you got to start guessing or start you know making yeah estimated well thought out Educated guesses is what I'm trying to say. Words are hard this morning for me. At least it's morning when I'm filming. So, um, so yeah, you don't really know how advanced the civilization is. 
and at only 2,000 years is kind of a young civilization, especially if they keep restarting every couple thousand years and don't have a lot of historical context other than the cultists book about the stars like this existence of these things so they don't have a ton of ancient texts they don't have a ton of archaeological finds um anthropological finds so they don't know for sure if this is actually what happens it just happens to be in this ancient cult text um and there's no evidence that they can find to really back it up so everybody's just kind of they don't know what to think like they're all getting agitated as the lights going dimmer and dimmer and dimmer but nobody's lost their minds yet um but yeah there's just i have a lot more questions about this story i really did enjoy it it is a very well done piece um i think for its time it was very original nobody nobody was really writing this kind of thing um so it's it's a really well done piece and i really enjoyed it i highly recommend it i can't wait to read the rest of the book actually because i'm not as familiar with isaac asimov's work so i'm really excited to get through the rest of the uh short stories in there but um yeah it it was a really interesting read but again, if you're a person who really likes world building, this might be a little disappointing, but the philosophies, the way that the social science and religion tend to interact is very interesting. Um, the war between them, of course, is something that's we understand in our common world today, the separation of church and state, especially in the United States, um, and the separation of science and religion has been a really really big um topic for a lot of people and this addresses it to an extreme uh which is really really interesting of course i think that's always a fascinating subject to try and delve into is how do science and religion interact in extreme situations um so this was really interesting read for that reason and also it just has really good word while there's not a lot of world building it has really good word pictures for people's perspectives and what's going on um it explains it explains itself fairly well so you really understand the very basic in the dark feelings liter pun intended um that these scientists have where they're they are in the dark about what the dark is like. Um, so this is just a really interesting philosophical um, read for a short story. Uh, you could pick out a lot of social commentary out of it, but it was very enjoyable. I highly recommend it. Um, and I can't wait to hear what Greg has to say about it because he usually has a lot of really interesting history behind the author and stuff that he can include in this as well so yeah i really liked it you may have noticed we've been reviewing and reading a lot of short stories lately the short story form is very important to the early formation of the science fiction genre starting right away with hg wells wells in his very early writing career, wrote primarily short stories, and most of them were science fiction, fantasy, horror, and they were excellent stories. And when the science fiction magazines came along, the short story form became even more important, being primarily what was published. They usually would have a serialized novel split up over two, three, four issues, and then the rest of it would be short stories and novelettes. A, a, format which continues in the science fiction magazines to this day. So a lot of the greatest science fiction stories are shorter works. They're shorter than novels. And a lot of the early novels, a lot of the great early novels, like the whole Foundation Trilogy or the Martian Chronicles, are actually compilations of related short stories put together to make a novel when, in the 1950s when 
science fiction was beginning to catch the attention of book publishers and, and started moving out of the magazines. So Isaac Asimov, of course, started out writing short stories. His first story was published when he was a teenager in 1939, Marooned Off Vesta. And only two years after that, he published Nightfall in 1941 in Astounding Stories. It was his first story to get a cover of a magazine. <coughs> Nightfall made a huge impact to the point where in the late 1960s the science fiction writers of America voted it to be the greatest science fiction story ever. Emily kind of covered what Nightfall is about, so I'm going to skip the synopsis and go right into talking about how this story, on today's standards, really doesn't live up to being the greatest ever. There are greater stories. Even looking back at the 1940s, 1950s, I'm sure everyone can find a story back then that they feel is a stronger story, even, even a better science fiction story. Not to say that Nightfall isn't a really terrific story, really enjoyable to read. It is. It's one of my favorites. I've read it a number of times in, in different books, uh, collections, anthologies. Um, my current collection, I've got it in The Best of Isaac Asimov and just reread it for the purpose of doing this review. And it's an excellent story, but what has always bothered me about Nightfall is that it feels too much like you take an Earth city and put it in this alien environment and then have this astronomical event happen and the people react to it. It's The people are too Earth-like. The society is too Earth-like. You have astronomical observatories and newspaper men writing stories for published newspapers. It's way too Earth-like. We're talking about an alien world in an alien environment with completely alien night sky to anything we are familiar with. I feel Asimov should have done a lot more to think about how this civilization would develop, both cult culturally, or, or all culturally, scientifically, and even biologically. How would they evolve on a world where nighttime never happens? They'd definitely be different from us. They would have totally different culture. I would think they would have a completely different biology because they would be functioning in a, a completely different environment and have different environmental needs. So that's the weakness of the story. The strength is the idea. The weakness is he just didn't go nearly far enough. He was way too... Um, can't really say Anglo-centric, but because... You know, he's including all of Earth, but, you know, he, it, it felt way too much like a, a 1940s American city placed in this environment. So, for that reason, I can't really say that I think this is the greatest science fiction story of all time, but it did have a huge influence. Um, Asimov and Silverberg did expand this into a whole novel, which I have not yet read. Maybe they took it further in that book and imagined an alien world better. I don't, I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Nightfall was also made into a movie. I recently obtained a copy from a clearance sale online. I've never seen the movie. I've only heard that it's really bad. It was made by Roger Corman in the 1980s. Um, I'm saving up watching it till a time when Emily and her husband can join me and, and we can watch this movie together because I think they'll be, at the very least, the three of us can laugh our way through it. Um, possibly we'll really like it. I don't know. I've never seen this movie. We'll, we'll check it out and see. Maybe we'll do a, a video on it. But it is a, a highly influential short story. But at a time 
when before Asimov even started writing, Stanley Weinbaum wrote a Martian Odyssey where he imagined all these alien creatures that would result in the different environment of Mars. And authors like Hal Clement were writing very good shorts, were writing very good stories and novels where they imagined alien beings and alien cultures very, very well. There's no reason for Asimov to have completely ignored this um, point of, of speculation with such an environment. So the quote here is provided by Asimov. It was the springboard for the whole story, as a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. If the star should appear one night in a thousand years, how would men believe and adore and preserve for many generations the remembrance of the city of God? And yeah, I'm reading from notes. That quote sparked a conversation between Asimov and John Campbell, which resulted in the story Nightfall. And the rest is science fiction history. And I hope we're going to continue to review science fiction short stories because there are so many that are extremely important to the development of science fiction to today. And I personally love the short story form probably better than novels. So with that, go read Nightfall. It's a great story. Just understand that it's not perfect. And with that, we'll see you next Friday.